Welcome back to the Transforming Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio, podcast, and television show. I'm your host, Life Coach Mirna Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is Rebecca Zung. Rebecca and I are going to be talking on the topic, how to negotiate with a narcissist and when. I will tell you that the conversation with narcissists has always been my most favorite. I love talking about them. Um, I remember reading this book years ago about the psychopath next door, <laughs> and it's always fascinated me. So um, uh, I hope that Rebecca and I can share with you um, information on dealing with a narcissist because they're very common, more common than you can think of. So welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's You're such a pleasure. Welcome. All right. So let me give you a brief introduction. Rebecca Zung is a globally sought after expert in the art of negotiation and high conflict communication. Speaking on platforms worldwide, she is a best-selling author of several books, including Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. She's a YouTube celebrity with more than 40 million views in just three years. She's also the founder of the proprietary slave method of negotiating with narcissists, and her programs have transformed thousands of lives in more than 100 countries and on every continent. Married at 19 for the first time, she had three children by the age of 23 and then was a divorced single mom when she decided to go back to law school. She went from being a single mom, college dropout, to becoming one of the most powerful lawyers in the country at the helm of a multi-million dollar practice. Rebecca's podcast, Negotiate Your Best Life, is ranked in the top 5% of all podcasts globally. Now remarried and a mom to four kids, she's committed to sharing her secrets and empowering others to live their lives at their optimum level of success, professionally and personally. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Like Rebecca, right off the top. I want to congratulate you on going from single mom to badass attorney at the helm of a multi-million dollar practice. So how did you get into this work about narcissists? Were you married to one? Uh, well, <clears throat> I had all sorts of different things. I mean, my first husband was definitely not a narcissist. We were just married too young. Um, but I really started studying narcissism to beat them in the co courtroom so that I could, because everybody started to be a narcissist, you know, I mean, all of my clients started saying people were narcissists, right? And so I really needed to start studying it so I could win in the courtroom. And it was really like I had discovered penicillin when I started applying it to what I was already a master at, which was negotiation. And I, that's really how it started to come about. But I will say, you know, I was bullied as a kid for being Asian, you know, I'm half Chinese. And it's always a lot easier to advocate on behalf of others than it is in your personal life as a peer or as a, in a relationship. You know, in relationships, I will say I was, I'm always... Uh, I was always more showing up as a pleaser, as somebody who didn't have necessarily great boundaries. And so for sure, I was, you know, much more of an empath. And so for sure, I was definitely um, ripe for a narcissist to be preying on me. Uh, right. so, <laughs> that's, that's what narcissists look for, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I... Uh, it was great information for me as well. And so for me to start using what I was applying in the courtroom and in my mediation tactics, my conflict resolution tactics, it, I started using it in my personal life too. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that's good. I mean, I am, um, I'm glad that you weren't, you know, married to a narcissist um, because uh, you would come away with some, some trauma from that. So that's great. Oh, well, I, I, was, I won't say that I didn't have a lot of trauma in my personal life um, in many other ways, many okay. other ways. I mean, my <laughs> mother's an alcoholic and, you know, and my mother-in-law definitely, you know, has issues. I mean, you know, way, lots of other people close to to us in, in right, our, right. In our, okay. in well, our world, good. for that's sure. Good. 
Yeah, right. I just loved your story about, you know, single mom at 19, going back to law school, becoming successful. I love that story. Love that story. All right. So today we're talking about negotiating with narcissists and when. And as you said, um, your skills um, in, the, in the courtroom, um, uh, you started studying this and you have kind of like an acronym for, you know, narcissists called high conflict personalities or HCPs. So um, uh, can you share who are high conflict personalities and um, how do these individuals form? Like, do, are they born this way or are they develop this way? <laughs> oh, such great questions. Both of them are such mm -hmm. great questions. Uh, so high conflict personalities aren't always necessarily completely narcissists, but but narcissists are always high conflict personalities. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, but you know, it, and and here's the thing about that. People who can say somebody's a narcissist and, you know, maybe somebody's a narcissist or they're not a narcissist, but it really doesn't matter because how they show up for you is all that really matters, right? It's the impact on you. And the thing is, what this person is, is a person who really gets off on conflict. That's what they enjoy. Wow. They enjoy the, the I want to get supply from you and you know, I mean, I remember my father-in-law, God rest his soul, you know, I don't know if he was a narcissist or not, but he was definitely kind of a high conflict personality in the sense of, you know, we would be at a dinner conversation and he would get somebody to the point of being upset, almost on the verge of tears or whatever. And, and he'd go, well, now we're having a conversation. <laughs> and, and it's like, no, wow, this person is really upset. Like, that's not a conversation, <laughs> you know, but that's a high conflict personality. They enjoy the process of getting somebody hmm. squirming, upset it, 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 that they, they, they like that friction and, and they get off. It's almost like a high of enjoyment of seeing people squirm. And that's definitely a narcissist for sure. And where does it come from? It's definitely not a genetic thing. There's no mutation where you can go, oh, there's that person. <laughs> okay. um, it's definitely trauma. Oh. And what happens is that, well, all of us, when we are dealing with stress, our bodies emit hormones, which are adrenaline and cortisol, which we're all familiar with, right? Which mm -hmm. prepare us to run faster or, or, um, or, 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 or deal with the stress of, of whatever it is that we're dealing with. Well, what, when we're children and this happens on a regular or continuous basis, it can cause damage to the emotional center of the brain, which is the limbic system part of the brain. And then what happens is then there there can develop a lag between the the uh, um, the thinking judgment part of the brain, which is the neocortex part of the brain, and mm -hmm. the emotional center part of the brain, which is the limbic system. And so what happens is when they grow up and they are triggered then mm -hmm. by various, things that happen in their lives, which are not necessarily rational or reasonable. Like they feel like they're going to be slighted in some way, or they think that they're going to be exposed, or they think they're going to experience a loss of control, or um, it can be verbal or nonverbal. So it could be an eye roll, it could be a tone of voice, or anything like that. Then what happens is then that emotional center part of the brain, they call it narcissistic injury, then is triggered and it literally shuts down the neocortex part of the brain. And now they're only thinking with mm. that part of the brain. Mm. And now rational or reason is gone. Out of the window. Out right. of the window. And so you're no longer communicating with rational mm -hmm. or reasonable. Wow. 
And, and so now they become unaware of the collateral damage that they're oh, wow. causing to other people around them. It's called wow. narcissistic blindness. And so they literally become blind to wow. those, to that. And, and, and the really scary thing is during the discard phase of narcissism, where they dis, they literally discard people, mm -hmm. um, they will, you become public enemy number one, because they have to take you down before you can take them down. Well, what will happen is then they will actually self-sabotage in order to take you down. Oh my goodness. So they wow. will literally say, I will burn my business to the ground. So before I give you money. Yeah. Right. Yes. Wow. 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 Exactly. Wow. This is totally new information for me because I always lump the narcissist with a psychopath. <laughs> like I started well, off telling be. you about that book, The Psychopath Next Door. I'm, I was lumping them all together, but I love this, this new spin on uh, um, uh, the narcissistic psychopathic person because I'm, I'm imagining being in a, a courtroom or a divorce where you're having this narcissist and he's willing to throw out the, they call it the baby with the bat water so that he can win. Is that what they want to do? They want to win or they just want to spite the other person? Which both. comes first? <laughs> well, it's both. So what I call it is there's a narcissistic supply, right? So most people just say supply in general, which is, you know, feeding that ego. Mm -hmm. But supply is really tiered. So it could be, reputation, which is the highest form of supply, how they look to the world, mm -hmm. they'll protect and defend that at any cost. Mm -hmm. But then there's that manipulation factor, which is making you sweat, seeing you squirm, mm -hmm. giving you pain, that mm -hmm. almost um, mm -hmm. sadistic factor. And, and, and enjoying that, it too. They enjoy enjoying that. it. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. It could be smearing you, you know, um, putting you down to make themselves feel better. And all of that, you know, rage, rage comes from making themselves bigger because they feel small by making mm. themselves bigger. It makes the, that smallness. So not so small. And so what, all of that is though, is really a, a lesser form of supply, but they, that is all part of it too. So while winning is one part of it, that's only part of it because that, that's why you can't resolve things in negotiations. That's why they constantly move the goalposts and mm. you, you can't ever get your cases settled. And people think, oh my God, you know, I've spent so much money on these cases or I can never resolve things. It's gone on for years. It cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Why? Well, this is why, because they also enjoy the process of mm. seeing you sweat and squirm. Wow. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So no wonder that you have made this your life goal in order to work with that person, because I can just imagine you know, you being a, a an attorney and you're saying, coming across all these narcissists every single time. <laughs> wow. So um, uh, how did you come up with a solution to the best way to communicate with a narcissist? Um, let's start with the courtroom and then we can take it down to personal. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, for one thing, I, I had a narcissistic business partner at one point too, um, not as an attorney, but in a different, you know, entrepreneurial type of a realm. But, uh, you know, also just helping people on a global scale. You know, during COVID, I started on YouTube and I saw that this one video, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist, was the one that really took off. Mm -hmm. And so I started developing a program around it, which is, you know, has helped tens of thousands of people around the world. It has an app that's um, part of the program and it's completely digital so people can use it wherever they are. And so that's um, something that is incorporated in what I do. I mean, the app, you know, it, help, it helps people find a lawyer. It helps people create leverage. It helps people organize their documentation. It helps people 
with finding hidden assets and income and dealing with trackers and hackers, like really everything that people need as far mm -hmm. as negotiating with narcissists. Um, so that's part of it. And, and I've also developed a, a high conflict negotiation certification program, which trains coaching coaches now mm -hmm. so that people can coach people uh, in this mm -hmm. realm as well. So I've, um, you know, certified hundreds of coaches at this point. Um, okay. And so this is my life's work. At, at, at this point, because I, 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 I always say I'm developing an arming, a, a, an army of light workers. You know, I feel like I'm, <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah. chosen by our creator to be the conduit to do this. Good and this Good is what I, yes. I feel like it's my, I've been called to right. do. I love it. Yeah. Whenever you've got a, a specific niche like this, you're definitely called. And usually it starts off with, you know, like the marriage thing. So it's, it's interesting that it didn't start off that way. But if someone right now is going through a divorce with a um, a narcissist or a high conflict person, what is one way that you can tell them, you know, without going through your program or anything, that they can communicate and deal with this person? Yeah, I always say there's, you know, even it, SLAY is my acronym, which is strategy, leverage, anticipate, and you. But the first thing I always tell people to do is step one, don't run. Step two, make a U-turn. Step three, break free. So step one is is part of the strategy. And, and that is just put one invisible shield down around you and, and just start you know, I, I explained that they are basically two-year-olds in adult bodies. So start looking at them as if they are a toddler having a tantrum on the floor and just start realizing that that's basically what they are. They're going to just scream louder and they're going to scream longer and they're going to be like, I want that bottle, give it to me. And, and they're right. just going to scream louder and longer until they realize that you're just going to have to, they're going to have to give up and they're going to be the worst right before they give up. And you're just not going to give in. And so you're just going to demand one, you know, that, that you're going to have respect for yourself and you're going to have that boundary. And, and that's going to be your first boundary. Your first boundary is going to be that you're not going to have a conversation unless it is respectful. And mm -hmm. no matter who the person is, if it's your boss, your mother, your sister, your brother, your whoever it is, if you're a human being on this planet, you mm -hmm. deserve to be spoken to with respect, period, mm -hmm. end of story. And so you just, you can use phrases and I have phrases that are free that people can get at disarmthenark.com. They're totally free. So you can just get them. Um, and you just start with, um, you know, this approach is not working for me. And you can say something like that. Mm -hmm. Or if say, they say something like, you know, you're a whatever they just want to fill in the blank. You just say, thank, thank you for the feedback. Um, you know, okay. <laughs> you just, okay, whatever. I mean, it's just, it's, you've got your invisible shield down around you. Um, so I, you know, I agree with you that that is your opinion. I agree with you is always a good one. You know, I agree that that's what you think. Um, I understand. I hear you. That's an interesting perspective. Um, you know, you just, you just, okay, whatever. I mean, that's, you, you don't have to do anything. It just, that's what they think. And you just let it go right there. You're just looking at them as if they're a toddler having a tantrum on the floor. Um, I, you can just, I, I can see that you're upset and we can continue this conversation when you've calmed down. And that's it. You remain calm though. Yes. You remain calm and never use absolutes with them. You don't say you always this or you never that or uh, uh, anything like that. Never use swear words. I always say never use swear words because if you, anytime you go to those things, that's what they're going to seize on. Oh, okay. This mm -hmm. is where you go. This is, you know, everything is going to be about that now. So, you know, I, I have a lot of um, ways that you can communicate powerfully in my program, but 
you know, instead of going higher with your tone, go lower is the oh. lower you go, then the less emotional you sound. The minute you lose control, they know they have you. So, <laughs> you know, they go fishing, they go and they beat you and they, they really win. Right. And yes. now you're sucked in, dragged in, dragged down. You know, you don't want to go down there. You want to be here. Right. I love that. That's brilliant in so many levels. Because yes, you said that their main purpose is to see you squirm and sweat. And what feeds that? When they seeing you squirm and, fat, sw and sweat. So if you never squirm and sweat, you're not giving them the ammunition. And when you talk about don't get angry or don't raise your voice or don't swear or, or whatever, because that's like throwing gasoline on the fire. <laughs> yeah. So I like it when you say, hey, you know, this person is, is zinging me, but they're not getting a response. So I'm not feeding them. So that's beautiful. You know, my husband is not a narcissist, but there are certain times that he'd love to get a reaction out of me. <laughs> Right. You know, like I would walk in the door and he wouldn't look up or something. And I would get so mad because I'm saying you can't even say hello or whatever. And he's doing that to get a response from me. So I understand. So but I've your learned Teflon, not to... your, your, your yeah. invisible shield, yeah. <laughs> invisible shield down around you. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Yes. I love it. And just, you, and you, but you've learned that as early as in school, when you have a bully, because they tell you not to let the bully know that when they call you a name or something that it's getting to you, that you have to pretend that it's just water over a duck's back or something. So, you know, the skills that you learn early on in life, you can carry on later on. So that's beautiful. People oh, forget yeah. those things and they just react and respond. And you've got to oh, learn yes. how not to react, especially when you oh, know yes. that you're dealing with I love your word, high conflict personality, someone that's always looking for a fight, right? Yes. So I'll give you a couple more because I always say observe, don't absorb, respond, don't react. So I'll give you something that um, I always say to people because I'm, I'm half Chinese. So I always wear jade. So you'll remember this. I always okay. wear jade, but never jade. So never justify, argue, defend, or explain. Never justify, argue, defend, or explain, which is Jade. Um, and, and the reason why is because when you're dealing with a high conflict personality, first of all, they're going to say things. They're going to be, obviously, they're trying to get supply from you. So they're going to say the most thing, the thing that's going to be the, the thing right. that's going to try to bait you. They're going to try to trigger you. So if they know that integrity is important to you, they're going to accuse you of being dishonest, right? right? Or, oh, you're the one who took the money or you're terrible with numbers or whatever it is. Right. And right. it's because they want you to go, what? I'm the one who always does the thing, you know, and, and then they're, oh, that's ooh, your justification. There right? you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so, um, uh, so never justify, argue, defend, or explain, you know why? Because you've never seen one go, Oh my gosh, you That's are so true. Right. Yes. <laughs> I stand corrected. I, like, they, they're never going to get that those. That's so feedback. funny. Yes. <laughs> Where are you going Doesn't with work. that? Yes. Wow. <laughs> How do you think this is going to end? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so true. <laughs> I love that. All right. So. I am, uh, one of the questions I have here is, can any can you have a successful relationship with a high conflict personality? We're not even calling them narcissists anymore. We're calling people that have that likes to have conflict. You know, my my daughter was was um, engaged to somebody. They ended up committing suicide, but he was one of these personalities mm. where she would say one thing and he would argue about it all night. In fact, the night before he committed suicide. She called him and he didn't answer his phone. And she asked him, why didn't you answer the phone? And that turned into an argument all night. Why, why would you dare ask me why I didn't answer the phone? And, and then mm -hmm. the next day he committed suicide because, oh, no. I mean, I know it's, it's one of those things, that, but, but, and we were all saying, you know, we didn't want him to commit suicide or anything, but we're all saying that she would never have been happy with that type of person. So can mm -hmm. you have a relationship with someone like that? 
and be happy. <laughs> no, not to be happy. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> but you just added the end of the sentence. No, the answer is no. The, I mean, right. can you have a relationship only if you have, um, want to sentence yourself to never having any needs of your own and right. <laughs> being right. a complete, right. being completely depleted and exhausted at all times. And yeah, uh, yeah no. Yeah. Uh, okay. Dimming your light and wow. completely sucking your soul. I mean, wow. You know. Wow. Well, this is a great conversation to have because I love, you know, putting this kind of information out there for people to become aware because awareness is key. Consciousness is key. So this is really an important conversation because you know what? A lot of people, like you said, you're seeing it in a courtroom, but people are seeing it in their homes and their bedrooms. You know what I mean? So this is a great conversation. So, all right, I know that our time is limited today. So um, tell us about your book, Slay the Bully. It's funny, I was just talking about a bully a minute ago from, <laughs> you know, from, <laughs> from childhood, but you know, there's bullies when you grew up too. Um, so mm -hmm. your book is called Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. Mm -hmm. So tell us what this, I think you mentioned it before, but you know, maybe you can expand now. What does yes. um, SLAY stand for? Why did you write the book? And what do you want people to walk away with after reading? Yeah, so SLAY stands for strategy, leverage, anticipate, and you. And strategy is creating that vision and where is it that you want to go? Leverage goes back to the two different forms of supply. You have to create a, a form of leverage where you are threatening a form of supply that's more important for them to protect than the supply that they get from manipulating you, which is that diamond level supply. And you do that through your documentation, through your um, text messages, your, your correspondence, your witnesses, your patterns, you're looking through the patterns, right? And I teach you how to do that through my program. Um, and then uh, and A is anticipate what they're going to do and be two steps ahead of them. You do that through knowing the type of narcissist or high conflict personality that you're dealing with and then having a toolkit. Um, I have, a, I mean, dozens of different types of tools that people can use. I just gave you a couple little tasters right there. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, you, you is your mindset, 100% knowing that you can win and 100% being on the offensive at all times. I mean, your mindset is more important than anything. You and your authentic power. And, you know, I always give the example of Glinda, the good witch in The Wizard of Oz. You know, when the wicked witch came around her and, and she was standing there and she said, go away, you have no power here. Glinda was completely <laughs> like, please lady, I don't even know. And, and, and the, the wicked witch was scared of her, right? Mm -hmm. Because Glinda was in her authentic power. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's like when a narcissist or a high conflict personality goes near somebody in their authentic power, because they know that there's no opening there. There's no mm -hmm. vulnerability. They mm -hmm. go to people who have vulnerabilities. Yes. yes. And, yes. and so when you're in your true authentic power, there's no vulnerability. You just, that's who they really respect is people who don't have those vulnerabilities. And once you know yeah. how to stand in your authentic power, then you, you're completely bulletproof. That's what it's all about. Okay. So that's great. Yeah. So um, book is, book what do you want available? people to walk away with after reading the book? Uh, yeah, the book is available everywhere. And what I want them to walk away with is that, that message. And I mean, the first step is, you know, is step one is don't run is what we talked about. You know, all of those, um, uh, you know, s t tactics. And then step two is create that U-turn and you do that through your leverage, through creating your, 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 um, your vision, your leverage, and figuring out how you're going to spring it on them and, and creating that um, that way to squeeze them into doing what you want. And you do it without backlash. You use their own stuff against them. And mm -hmm. and then um, step three is break free. And, and you're completely broken free once you are able to live your life and 
move forward. And, and the strategies and everything that I teach are not about the narcissist. It's about you because mm -hmm. narcissists are always going to be around. They're yeah. always going to be around. I mean, there's, yes. and it's an epidemic. It's about <laughs> you knowing how to handle yourself in mm -hmm. a way that you have freedom and you have power and you know how to be who you are meant to be. And you, every single person born on this planet is born for greatness. And you mm -hmm. all know that you were born for more. Everybody That's knows beautiful. that they were born for more. Yeah, yeah. And not to let someone suck the life out of you, right? Yes, by being an argument every single day for every single thing and enjoying it. Wow, yes, wow. That is really interesting that we have so many of these high conflict personalities running around. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't, right, don't, so don't give them the power. Do not give them that? the power. Do not right, give, exactly. don't give right. any way, anyone your power. You are meant right, for more. Right, right. Okay. So um, uh, tell us your website, your social media handles. Tell us about your coaching program so that the listeners can um, reach out. Yes. Um, so uh, my YouTube is RebeccaZung.tv. Um, my um, Instagram is at RebeccaZung. They can get my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet. Uh, that's a prep playbook that's 15 pages. They can get that at winmynegotiation.com. My book is available everywhere that books are sold. So um, Amazon, I have three books there. Um, totally get um, any of my books there. Um, and then, of course, my website is rebeccazung.com. Everything is there, too. Um, and, you know, I look forward to helping people from your community and um, because, you know, I'm here to serve. Right. Exactly. Well, thank you for that. And, um, your, your podcast is called negotiate your best life. Right. Yes. So, right. Awesome. Well, listen, guys, um, this was such an important conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed sharing this information with you. I will have a transcript of my conversation with Rebecca on the show page, which is my helps.us. I will link out to her book, her YouTube channel, um, uh, her website and her social media handles so that you guys can, uh, and also her podcast. <laughs> so you guys can continue to get some more of this information because I know that you know someone <laughs> that would fit into this kind of character um, uh, slot. Someone that, you know, even if they're full, if they're not even full HCPs, someone just likes to, um, to get the best of you and always make your life miserable whether yes. at work or at home, like she said, it could be family members. It could be somebody you work with. It could be your husband. It could be your best friend. It could be anybody. Yeah. And, and there's more of them out there than, than not. And um, as you were talking, I remember um, uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie has been fighting for eight years. Yep. <laughs> and I'm sure that's a high conflict. Somebody's yes. high conflict going on there. I don't know which one, <laughs> but which somebody is. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> So, all right, guys. Well, listen, thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode of Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life. Um, if you're watching this on iTunes, we'd love for you to give a rating and a review. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd love for you to subscribe. Rebecca, thanks so much for being on the show. I enjoyed our conversation and good luck. Until thank next time. You. You're welcome. Thank, thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye.